Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're continuing on with our Premier League team of the season and we're going to move on to our attacking midfielders. So first up, we've got Deli Ali of Tottenham. Yeah, um, I think for me, you can't really leave him out. Uh, he's got the most appearances of all the attacking midfielders yeah. uh, in the list. And without his goals, he's got 17 goals, which is the most amount as well. Without his goals, Spurs wouldn't be up where they are. And... He he's like he's pivotal to the way they play and, and yeah. vital to for their goals and his link up with Kane is it's so strange how good they are together. Like yeah. it's like they're telepathic almost sometimes. Yeah. How do you feel, Josh, anyway? Yeah, like pretty much I'd have to exactly agree with what you said because without Deli Alley and Harry Kane, Spurs there wouldn't be nothing but they certainly wouldn't be up in second place. I mean for a for a kid the age it, Deli Ali is to just come in and seemingly same nearly transition into the Premier League is frightening and just the amount of goals he scored 17 for an attacking midfielder that's frightening like. yeah I know um, we've got goals with Ali like, and he's got 17 which is hard to argue but at the same time he only plays what 35 passes per match he's only got 12 successful through balls this season for an attacking midfielder goals are great and everything but at the same time, many goals win your game. So yeah, but goals are going to dry up eventually. So there's no attacking midfield. They're probably Frank Lampard aside in the Premier League era, who has really consistently scored fifteen to twenty goals every season. So if that dries up, do do you think Ali maybe goes back to being more of an average player if the goals did dry up from? Uh, we'll see if the goals uh, do dry up, and then we'll go from there. I think yeah. confidence from this season is going to be really important to him. Yeah, if he stays. Yeah. Yeah, it's same. Yeah, and he is so young as well. I guess he can only kind of there's only room for improvement with him really, and to have seventeen goals in the Premier League season at this age isn't exactly a bad thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. we got well, anyway. Basically, moving on to like most assists. So yeah, you have to throw Kevin De Bruyne into the mix, of course. He's had a, like he, he's kind of gone quietly under the radar. Yeah. Uh, like if you didn't actually realize how many assists he had, you'd probably say he had a quiet enough season. Yeah, I think, to be honest, City, especially in the second half of the season, have really kind of kicked on a bit and started to look more like a Pep Guardiola team. Yeah. And I think um, Kevin De Bruyne is absolutely vital to that. He basically, when you look at the way that City set up now, he's basically become Andres Iniesta, where he's that attacking midfielder who just floats between the lines and plays all the passes and everything like that. 16 assists is Cesc Fabregas in his prime at Arsenal and Chelsea numbers. Yeah in the Premier League and that's not easy to do whatsoever yeah. as well as that make goals too sorry. Yeah. yeah absolutely as you said with the assist there 16 in the Premier League you're not going to see you're not going to see probably one of them in every kind of top 4 top top 5 top 6 team and especially with the group the cluster that there is now it used to just be the top 4 and now it's the top 6 you're looking for players like your <laughs> top <Alex>. 7 <laughs> <laughs> just because he's got Europe on the technicality stop it <laughs> We'll see you next season. We're going to spend big this summer. You won't be saying that next season. After he's laser striker for 100 million. Sell him. <laughs> um, I'd have Harry Kane. I think what's important to look at with um, De Bruyne as well is the 82 la accurate long balls this season, which is for Manchester City and the fact that they play such a quick pace and an yeah. attacking sense. Yeah. Especially Raheem Sterling. Aguero's a low team. Yeah. So you've got, like, as you say, Aguero, you've got Sterling, you've got Sané out on the left, you've got Gabriel Jesus. And if he's got the ability to play long balls over the top to them or find Sané and Sterling out wide with long balls, he can only just further his potential and further his ability as pretty much City's leader in midfield now. He's kind yeah. of... I don't think Manchester City are half the team they are without Kevin De Bruyne on the side. Yeah. I think he's vital to them. Um, a, player who should, a player who should be vital um, to his side, but this season maybe on paper hasn't... Hit the heights that he probably showed for the price tag that he came with and the ability that we all know he has is Mesut Urza. Yeah. Eight goals and eight assists isn't exactly bad, but for a man eight, who... Eight, eight big chances created. Yeah, and a man who had the nickname of, you know, may I assist you. Yeah. Eight assists isn't very good for a player with 32 appearances. Josh, how do you think Urza's season kind of stacks up to the Bruyne and Ali? Well, I think um, one of the last videos... I criticised Alexis Sanchez for being angry and sulking going off the pitch and that I think one of the players he was probably most angry with was Mesut Ozil. Yeah. Um 
I know maybe he hasn't played in his favourite position every game. I know he's been dragged out to the left and the right sometimes, but mm. for, to me, he, he just didn't give it a hundred percent rational this season. And I think, um, if uh, obviously we still have the last last round of games to come, but, but if Arsenal don't don't finish in the top four, players like him not putting in a hundred percent will be exactly why. And I think the stats show that yeah, you're gonna get eight goals, eight, eight assists, but that's gonna come natural with a player like Ozil's ability. The extra work rate and heart is is what's gonna push them on and what may have got Arsenal into the top three, top four. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, for all, by all the stats, eight goals, eight assists. I mean, his goals aren't so bad because De Bruyne is kind of a level one, but like his yeah. cross and accuracy and crosses, he's got, he's got 183 crosses and 32% accuracy on those yeah. crosses. Now, I know last season he was setting up Giroud for a lot of goals, but those goals seem to have dried up this season and... You know, he's highly going to be whipping balls into Alexis Sanchez now, so do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, And with, you know, with Ozil as well, obviously his biggest influence is on the deck with balls through in behind yeah. for his wingers or his fullbacks or Sanchez, wherever he's playing. Um, 16 through balls completed all season. So that's one every two games, yeah. which is pretty dreadful for a player who arrived at Arsenal for 40 million and was kind of dubbed their saviour at the time. Yeah, so I think we've all the pressure on Wenger now and Meza Ozil is not shy of a bit of blame for that. Yeah. Um, he never really looks like he's interested in his body language no. anyway though. No. But does that work um, a little bit both ways when you look at the the crosses and the, the poor cross and accuracy? Do, do, does Wenger not have to go and take a little bit of blame about that then why am I playing him on the right and left every second week? Yeah, absolutely. I think he does. I think if you're going to bother having Mesut Ozil involved in your club and involved in your team he needs to play central and he needs Arsenal to play for the most part Ozil's looked a better player and against Southampton he um, played the mo- or created the most chances of any player in the Premier League this season in a single game and that was all down to the fact that he was playing in a 3-4-2-1 where he's playing on the right side of that two where he can come in on his left from just being a little bit out on the right he's a little bit more space and he created chances so Wenger has eventually found a position for him this season, but Urzel has to do more, but I think Wenger 100% has to yeah, do more yeah. for him. And another player who I think didn't really shine this season, who usually is up and around, is uh, David Silva. Yeah. Uh, four goals, seven assists, 33 games played. So I just feel like he, he by his standards, I think on his day, he's probably the best number 10 in, in the Premier League. Uh, yeah. I think the I feel, di- anyway. I think the difference with Silva this season, and we just talked about it with De Bruyne, with him kind of being the Iniesta for this um, City team, and I don't want to kind of more for the shabby. Kind yeah, of he's kind of sh- settled for being that little bit deeper where they play with the one very deep midfielder, and Silva's kind of in between there now, which I don't think actually suits him. Yeah, I think we all know David Silva playing just off a striker. It's frightening. Yeah, frightening on nah. his day. He's just a player who can turn a game on his head. To watch when he's playing against you. Um, and you look at it, only, t- only 26 through balls this season, 48 accurate long balls isn't too bad, um, but big chances created all season three, yeah. which is, you know, away from his, um, or big chances created is 12, sorry, away from his seven assists, which means he's only really created 19 goal scoring opportunities in 33 games, yeah. which, Paul, I don't think is good enough for a player of his standard, really, is oh, it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with you there. I mean, it's hard to argue that. I, I, as I said, I... I think on his day when he's when he's performing to the best of his ability, and he's playing behind the striker, I feel like there's no better player than him. But I think maybe it could be an age thing. Yeah. Where he's it's kind of catching up on him a little bit. No, just uh, one, just one thing, the the fact that David Silva's won in the Premier League probably of about five six years now, five six seasons. Yeah, about that. I think he signed from summer twenty eleven. And you remember how how obviously important he was in a couple of years, especially when they won the league and. You just think as his performances and consistently start to tail off, our team just getting used to him. Yeah. Could we see this with Deli Ali in years to come? Um, I think it probably could, yeah, but at the well, same time, tail- tailoring off. Yeah, yeah but just I think as teams get used to him and know how to stop his play. I think Deli Ali is so much younger though that he could very he could much stand to game, improve yeah. his game and adapt his game more so than Silva. And I think Ali is a much more athletic player than. David Silva is. Silva's probably a little bit more one dimensional than he is. Yeah. Now to um to Liverpool. Attacking midfielders, both of them have kind of played there the majority of this season, kind of moved between um the two of them. And we've got Adam Luana and Roberto Firmino. 
So, Josh, as the resident Liverpool fan in the room, I don't think Paul is one, by the looks of it, sure. Anyway. Um, <laughs> and Stephen sitting between us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we thought this might get a bit divisive. Um, what have you, what's your view on kind of Lallana and Firmino season as a whole? Well, for me, Lallana's done really well, considering um, he's obviously had a couple of injuries and had to go and find his form again in, in kind of each of them little spells. But it's, he's a really quality player and he's... Technically, for me, the last couple of years, he's probably been one of England's best midfielders. Yeah, I think in terms of his kind of pass ability, kind of kind of number far. ten role. Yeah, and uh, but it's it's a pity the injuries have kind of hampered him a little bit. Obviously, he's still got he's still gone and played thirty games this season. Liverpool, um, obviously since the second half of the season, haven't been great. His form's probably suffered slightly because they had a great start of the season along with like some Mane, Coutinho, Firmino. Um, tailed off a little bit, but for me, yeah, be happy with the season. Do you not think like with with uh, people were saying that when Mane went out, Liverpool lost their form. I thought as well when Lallana went out because he was yeah, absolutely in fabulous form. Uh, and yeah, then different players. Yeah. No, 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 I'm not saying that. It's what, he, what I'm saying is he well, well, He was scoring a lot of goals as well as Mane. Yeah. Like he was vital to the way Liverpool were playing at the time. And then when the two of them went out, he was just went on a bit of a, a downward spiral. Then you know so. Yeah. yeah, I think with Firmino as well, like he's kind of, he's one of those in between players where you don't really know is he a striker, you don't know is he, a, you know, number ten or even maybe a left winger. Yeah, well he's been a striker for most of this season, but but he's played there, kind of played the false nine roles. Yeah. yeah, he's been Liverpool's vocal point, unfortunately, because obviously Christian Benteke is gone, Danny Ings has been injured, Daniel Sturridge has been injured, so yeah. from for the most part they've had to look to a better yeah. Firmino in each, in each game, and. Like he he's done well. He's he scored eleven goals as as I suppose the centre attacking midfield and Liverpool playing without a striker. But a false nine, pretty yeah. much he's been yeah. playing, hasn't he? But yeah, like, essentially he plays kind of deeper than Mane and Coutinho do when they're out wide, but Liverpool are in full pump and kind of Lalana behind them. Yeah. So they kind of play as a double number ten. But um, we'll move on. You know, our fans are probably having heart palpitations at this point <laughs> in the video because we haven't mentioned their man yet. So the hundred million pound man, Paul Pogba. Um. Big price tag coming in, a lot of criticism this season. For me, I think it's very much unwarranted. Yeah, uh, it's not like he 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 came in with the he, like he goes oh yeah pay pay that money for me. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. just feel like he's he's been very very harshly treated, and I don't think if he had came in at about sixty million, people said oh you know what for a first season coming back bedding in a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, he wouldn't have the pressure. It wasn't for the price tag though. Yeah, so I'm saying so. Uh, I feel, I feel next season he'll be he'll be very good. I I, I have a f strange feeling he's gonna be one of the players of the season next year. Yeah, and like even this season for all people have bashed him. I know he's only got four goals and three assists. Well, he's hit the woodwork six times. Yeah, which is, you know, well, not even sitting on side of it. It's a goal, so that's ten, uh, ten goals. Yeah, exactly. And if he has ten goals, I think people are probably talking a bit differently about him. And yeah. he's created a lot of chance for Ibrahimovic as well that he was missed. Yeah. So he's not exactly had the most terrible of seasons. The stats are kind of jump out here. He's made over two thousand passes this season. He that's the uh, most playing player. Yeah, yeah, most by any player in the Premier League and completes nearly seventy four passes per game, which is quite exceptional, I think, for a midfielder to do. It's the distribution of the ball and being able to move it, and the hundred and fifty nine accurate long balls as well. That's important to Manchester United, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially with Lafa. Yeah. yeah. Especially the way they play now. That's what I was about to say. Um, it, when you you know that stat on the picture of vocal point, you've got players like Anthony Marshy, Alan Mark Rashford running off them. It was the same we spoke about it with uh, David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. And um, when you have a player like Pogba who can play balls like that in behind, for for the likes of Rashford and Martial to get on, that's that's almost Man United's game plan there. Especially the way yeah, Jose Mourinho likes to set up. Yeah, um, and for me as well, I think I know United finished sixth, and it's not the great. It's not a great season for Manchester United. I know they're in the Europa League final and everything. I, like I that, had I had this out with Man United fans on, uh, on Facebook, and that I just I don't see how it's a bad season. They they've won the Charity Shield, yeah, Community Shield, whatever it's called now. Uh, they've won the League Cup, and they're in the final on Wednesday. If they win that, they they win the Champions League. That's yeah. Three pieces of silver, silverware if they win. season into the back into the Champions League. I think if they win the Europa League, the season's a success. If they don't win the Europa League final and Ajax turn them over, I think Mourinho's going to be under a hell of a lot of pressure next season. Yeah, I see United winning, to be honest. Yeah, I can see them win that. I can see 
my ex caused him a lot of problems going forward with yeah. the other lads. But for me, I'll start it off with our picks. I'm actually going to go with Paul Pogba because I think Manchester United are probably a mid-table club at best without Pogba this season. I think he has actually been that influential in the games that he has played with. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, Deli Ali. I know Glenn would be happy with that one. Yeah, he'd be loving him now. <laughs> and I'll go with Kevin De Bruyne just simply because he's 16 assists and the way Man City have set up with um, Jesus, Sterling, Navas when he's played it's just been vital, vital to them to go and finish where they finished eight, up. So. Eight goals is bad as well. Yeah. yeah, to be fair. It's not terrible. Well, the lads have made their sensible pick so I've gone out there with Paul Pogba just to follow up on the Wilfred Zaha pick and keep it interesting. Um, but that's it for today. Um, make sure you like, share and subscribe this video and we'll be back again soon.